Let's then move to the Dutch Republic, where we're going to see a very different society, even though we've just been south of the border in Antwerp in Flanders. Now, we are north of Flanders. This area has been independent of Spain since 1648. It tends to be predominantly Protestant. Amsterdam will become the financial capital of Europe. This is via trade. So the Dutch will get very, very involved in transatlantic trade and general overseas trade. We will also see an area with the highest per capita income in Europe. Most of the people in the middle class are going to be merchants, people who are taking in those items and then selling them on into Europe, acting as middlemen. Their seafaring ability was also seen as a boon to the economy. But there are going to be significant religious differences between Calvinism, which is quite prominent at the time, and Catholicism. And here you can see the Roman Catholics, uh, Lutheranism, which is an outgrowth of Calvinism, basically. Here's Calvinism. Don't worry about the Anglicans. And you can see some of those differences. For example, the Pope as head of the church versus a council. The church and Bible tradition are sources of truth very, uh, versus the Bible being the sole source of truth. Worship services based on ritual versus worship services based on preaching. So you get the idea. There's going to be significant differences, and we're going to see this in the art, starting with Tabruggen. Now, he's one of few artists in the Netherlands to work with religious subjects. It's not terribly common. Remember when I talked about the Protestant Reformation, and there's concern about idolatry. That's going to come out in a lot of the religious work. And the piece that he creates, the most well-known piece, is going to be the calling of St. Matthew. And he selects the theme based on Caravaggio's work. So, let's look at the two. When you look at Tabruggen versus Caravaggio, he's changed the perspective. Whereas Caravaggio is at a distance, looking at the various characters almost as if they're on a stage. You notice they're all within the same plane. Whereas Tabruggen has turned it so that Jesus is actually in front of us. We're looking over his right shoulder into the scene. And this draws us in. It changes the composition. The background is roughly the same. It's happening in a pub. We see many of the same characters depicted from Caravaggio to Tabruggen. But it's that shift of composition that's going to be the most important. He's also going to shift the light. It's a much brighter scene. It's much more inviting. It gives us an idea of something that's happening in the daylight versus something that might be happening at 2 in the morning. Now, the moment that Tabruggen selects in the naturalistic figures echo Caravaggio. He did, however, dispose with the stark tonal contrast. We don't see the massive use of tenebrism or chiaroscuro that we see in Caravaggio's work. The small, well-lit space creates an intimacy and a feeling that the viewer is a voyeur in the scene, as if we've walked in on something that we're not supposed to. But there are a couple of interesting elements here. For example, Jesus is again hard to identify. In fact, we don't even have a halo, really. We're just given facial features and expected to understand, as well as this pointing hand, which compositionally draws us into the image and makes Matthew over here, or Levi, as he's called at the time, the focus of the image rather than Jesus. The other characters in it are using gaze to move us throughout the piece. For example, this young man bounces us back to Jesus. Jesus' uh, arm moves us back to Matthew. Even Matthew, pointing to himself, does the same thing. He keeps circulating us back. This young man, same thing. Gaze takes us to Jesus. This man looks across, and we come back to Matthew. This man might be drunk. We're not entirely sure, but he's focusing on the money and the paperwork and not really focusing on any other element. But compositionally, that stops us from falling off the right side of the piece. Yes, it's incredible looking at the armor and everything, but we keep getting pushed back into this area, focusing on the interaction between Matthew, Jesus, 
and the rather confused patrons of the bar who aren't entirely sure what's going on. 